Hello, friends. We're now outside. We are now no longer in Denver. And we're now about halfway between Denver and Grand Junction in a town, in a ski town called Vail. And guys, this is a very, very important message. This is a strict pinkies up area. This is as fancy as it gets in Colorado. So be sure to keep those pinkies up. This is a really cool town, lots to do. We're in one of the slower times of the year, not the slowest time. Uh, with it being a ski town, winter is of course the crazy time. But this is also a nice time to come here. Uh, it's May 30th today. And this is actually a really nice time to come because it's not so busy, but everything's open. But most things are open, I should say. And I'm definitely feeling the altitude going from zero feet to 8,200 feet here in Vail. So you know what does great with being short of breath is drinking. So let's go and sample some maple syrups. So I've arrived at my favorite maple syrup store here in Vail. It's called 10th Mountain Distillery. And I got a little sampling of my favorites from here. Right here we got a bourbon. Right here we got a rye. And then lastly over here we have a brandy. And I should say that all these syrups are aged and distilled. Uh, just down the road from here in a town called Gypsum. Uh, this has been my favorite place, one of my favorite places to come in Vail since I found it. And their syrups have won some awards and have come in very high placements and lots of competitions. Everything here is very, very good. I've never had a bad drink here. Good as always, absolutely ace. Ooh, when I, when I was in the syrup store, it started raining pretty good. And while I think that my GoPro is water resistant, I'm not so sure about the microphone. So I'm gonna stow my camera equipment away and walk the streets without any camera. But I'll pick up the guys when the rain stops and maybe we'll get some night shooting in. We'll see. See you guys later. Well, while we're waiting for the rain to stop, I figured we would use this opportunity to try and cook something in the truck for the first time. I have a frankly epic view of I-70 right now. So if you would please excuse the traffic noise, it is what it is. So what I'm gonna be using today is a jet boil. I just picked this up last weekend, and it's really cool. It runs off of this... It runs off of this propane butane mixture, and I was goofing around with it this weekend, and it's really, really cool. So let me go through the setup of it with you. So what it is, is basically a really intense camping stove. So you have your heating area right here, which is good for, the bowl is good for like liquids, like soups, pastas, things like that. 
But then if you're wanting to use a frying pan with it or another cooking, cooking pot, it has, just like most camping stoves, it has this ring for you to set a frying pan or anything else on. So that just goes on top like that and you can put anything you want on it once you have these uh, guys folded out. Uh. I'm gonna keep it simple today and I'm gonna make some pasta. So at this point we are heating up our water for the pasta and this takes about two minutes to bring uh, this whole canister up to boiling point. So it's super, super fast. Like by the time I get my pasta out of my food bag, it's going to be already ready to go in. We had a little bit of a boil over there for a second. I didn't catch it on film, unfortunately. But yeah, this thing is really intense. You really gotta watch your, uh, really gotta watch the temperature. Honestly, I would say, I don't know, maybe I'll get used to it as I use it more, but it might be better off by using the uh, uh, separate pot and use, use this pot holder if you're making pasta because unlike a stove where you can pull the pot off of the flame, this is all attached and it's a little, it's not attached attached, but it's a little bit finicky to get it off the heat really fast. So if you start to boil over, you're kind of uh, stuck. But I'm gonna let this simmer for a little bit and get this pasta cooked. Okay, pasta is done all cooked up. So now I'm gonna strain it and then put the sauce in. Now, I would usually just eat it out of the bowl, but something I forgot to get before getting on the road was plastic silverware. And metal and Teflon don't get along. So I'm gonna have to pour this into a bowl. just like so. And there we go, we have a five-star meal. We're headed back on the town. It's around five o'clock, so the stores are starting to close but maybe they'll just make us go to more of the uh, bars and restaurants uh, and check them out. Uh. 
Ooh, the people are leaving. It's getting spooky here. Right here is one of the ski lifts in Vail. When you're here in the winter time, you can chill out in this area over here and watch the skiers come down. I'm not much of a skier, so I like to just come here in winter time and chill out here. This right here is the main square of Vale Village. In the winter time, they turn this grassy area into a, a uh, ice skating arena. It's a lot of fun to watch people ice skate during the winter time. And there's that huge sculpture right there. And then we're gonna come back at nighttime for this one. I hope it doesn't make me a liar, but this one change, usually changes colors. I don't know if that's only in the winter time. Uh, it might not be on during the off season, but we're definitely going to come back here and see if this, if this uh, sculpture lights up at nighttime. So Vale is actually in multiple parts. So this area that we're in now is called the Vale Village. And then there's also a non-resort area of Vale. That's where you'll find like the Taco Bells, Burger Kings, gas stations, like regular town stuff. And then thirdly, my favorite part of Vale is an area called Lion's Head Village. I don't think it's older than Vale Village, but it has more of like a old school ski town kind of feel to it. And we're definitely gonna hit up Lion's Head tomorrow morning. It feels so good to be breathing Colorado air, air again. Florida is nice and all, but the, I don't know, it, it always just smells dank and moldy there. Yeah, it's so nice to have the cool, crisp Colorado air. To everyone still here with me in the video, I appreciate y'all being here. And Vale has an interesting history. It was, so there was a bunch of guys, military men, that would do training uh, north of Vale. During their time in the service, they would train north of Vale. And they liked it so much that after they were done with their service, they all got together and made Vale, vale Resort. And this all happened relatively recently. I believe the, the town was founded in 1962 or something like that. So it's a relatively young town, and I believe it has about 5,000 year-round residents. 
if you're wanting to live here permanently, uh, you're going to need to have some deep pockets. I think like a standalone home, I think to start talking about buying a standalone home here, you're in the maybe four to five million dollar mark. And then for a condo, I think you're just north of a million for a condominium. So definitely more financially efficient to maybe live somewhere close by so you can visit when you want to. I have not had a Colorado apple juice since February, last time I was in Colorado. So it is high time for a local apple juice. So I'm headed to Vale Brewing Company here in the main square. Sorry, California and Washington, but Colorado's apple juice is the best. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this summary of Vale. I'm gonna close out the video by making a return to that sculpture we looked at earlier in the video. And tomorrow, I might do, there's a trail that goes through Vale and the Vale Village and Lionhead Village. And I might do that trail. Uh, I've been getting winded from even walking upstairs at this altitude, so I don't know if that bike ride's gonna work out. Uh, if that doesn't work out, either way, I'm gonna do a video on Lionhead Village tomorrow. So we might get a bike riding and a Lionhead Village episode, or maybe just a Lionhead Village. But I'm gonna close this video out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you tune in next time. See ya.